in general, these are some of the questions that we can consider when we refer to MOOC, okay? Because there are also X MOOCs and C MOOCs, okay? But we have to consider these uh, questions because what is massive? 100 students? Well, not really. In general, MOOCs usually have uh, higher numbers, okay? More than 1,000 students usually, okay? That's why they are called massive. Uh, in the case of open, it's true that in most of the cases, uh, they have open registration. This is changing a little bit in the last two years, and some of them uh, have some requirements for register. For example, they give you seven days for free, but then if you want to continue, you have to pay something. This is changing, this is new from the last uh, two years. The, the, they have open content, okay, because it is usually distributed in different lessons, so you can get uh, access to that. Free of charge, as I said, in most of the cases you can enter, but then if you want the certificate, if you complete the course and you want the certificate, in some cases, more, is, this is more and more common, you have to pay something for the final diploma. Okay, but maybe uh, in some cases it's 30 euros or 40, uh, 40 euros, that is not quite a lot. It depends uh, also on the platform because how, as we will see, for example, in the case of Coursera, uh, they have like a specializ uh, specialization process, uh, programs, and in this case they can cost 500 or 600 euros. So maybe in these cases we have to evaluate if, if it's worth it or not, okay, for our personal development. Uh, and this is connected with the affordable. Online, the real-time interaction in some cases because they have um, broadcasting um, and streaming, okay, but in, in many cases, they also have forums. So you write there, and then the, the answer can be now or in an hour, OK? And the courses, if it's self-paced, as I said, the normal thing is that they distribute the contents into different uh, weeks or lessons, OK? In some cases, they have deadlines. If you don't finish the course in a specific uh, date, Maybe you cannot continue with the activities, especially for the assessment uh, activities. Uh, and then, well, the role of, uh, of the instructor and the feedback, because this is quite uh, commonly based on um, peer assessment. Okay? You develop a task, and then three partners evaluate it. Okay? And you have to evaluate the tasks of other three students as a minimum. Then if you want to go with more, there's no problem at all, okay? As I said, Coursera, I think, is the leader at the international um, context because they started uh, five or six years ago and they have some of the most prestigious universities of the world, okay? They have lots of uh, resources, lots of courses of education both for language learning, but also for other skills, okay? So take a look, in this case, you can see that the interface is in Spanish, but most of the courses, not all, but most of the courses are in English. So I always say that the, my first contact with Coursera was in, well, was four years ago, in summer, because I discovered that the, the, uh, there was a very interesting course on archeology span that is very far from my, uh, normal environment. But I like history and I said, okay, let's check. It was amazing. It was an amazing experience because I was doing something that was interesting for me and uh, the interaction with people from all the parts of the world was amazing, okay? But as I said, lots of courses of um, education, okay? And even uh, if you like, um, things related to writing in Spanish. Uh, the Universidad Autónoma de Barcelona has, uh, I think that's the third edition of um, Curso de Ortotipografía Española. That is also interesting to refresh some aspects about that, because why not? It's something that is there, and why not? But as I said, there are many, many options, and of course, related to computers, I think that's almost everything that you would like to learn 
could be more or less found here. Then EDX, this is true that originally, well, as you can see, we have Harvard, uh, MIT, and Berkeley, for example. This is more technological. There are some things applied to education, but that you can use for, uh, you know, if you want to know something about programming, for example, introduction to some uh, programming languages can be interesting, okay? In a, at, a bas uh, at a basic level, and then you start reading and start doing some tasks, and it's interesting. Uh, in the case of Khan Academy, I think that this was one of the first. Okay, this was based on uh, the idea that you can also share your knowledge. In the two previous uh, cases, there were prestigious universities teaching contents and competencies from their areas of expertise. But in the case of Khan, you can also be teachers for others. Okay, you have to register as a teacher or as a student, and you can see how, how to work there. Okay. It's another interesting. And if you see, there's also a part for parents, because they can also be focused on the children. Okay. Then in the case of Future Learn, this is British, and this is another possibility. In, if you see, in most of the cases, in, you can access for free. And then if you want the final uh, diploma, I think it's 30, oops, <laughs> don't worry. Uh, something like 30 pounds to get, yes, something like that. When, when you don't have to pay to access the course and you have to pay the diploma, uh, there's no more than 50 euros in general, okay? So pros and cons of these types of, uh, you know, learning processes, what can you tell me? What can you tell me about this? I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to think in pairs and try to decide some pros and cons of this type of teacher training, that is another possibility. And of course, well, apart from this, but it's quite possible that you know it, uh, INTEF also has uh, MOOCs and SMOOCs and PILs and different possibilities, but these are international ones, mainly in English, and you can also use it. So please, a couple of minutes to think about pros and cons of this, and then we will share it.
Okay, so let let's see what you think, please. Okay, so if you want, let's see, please. Um, let's see first, Son of the Cross, okay. Uh, now we only have this microphone, so if you don't mind what you tell me, I'll repeat it so that everybody can, can hear it. Okay, uh, so we start firstly with the pros, and then we move to the cons, okay? And then I will give you other ideas about that, okay? So, advantages. Okay, accessibility, okay? Okay, yes, you can access independently from the time, the place, the only thing that you need to have is internet connection. Yeah. <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay? So accessibility, what else? Sharing. Okay, sharing your ideas and the knowledge. And yes, it's all around the world because as this is massive, you can work with uh, people from Lebanon, from the US and from South Korea at the same time. Okay, and in this case, the normal things that you use a uh, language, I mean, a common language that in most of the cases is English. Okay, so it's another way to practice in real interactive contexts. Okay, what else? Okay, you save money and time. In what sense do you think you save time? Okay. Okay, so for example, he says that related to the medians of uh, the means of transport, okay, because you don't need to move anywhere, you don't need to travel to go to Harvard, okay? Yeah, for example. Okay, what else? Okay, enrichment, okay, linguistic, culturally, okay, so there's a, this is connected with uh, sharing. Yes, no doubt. What else? More pros? No timetable. No timetable, okay. Yes, in general, we have no schedules, okay. This is not always completely true because in some cases you have some final deadline and if you don't um, hand your activities in, for example, you cannot get the certificate. Yeah, but I mean, you can work at night. Yes, of course, you can work at night because probably if you're working at night in another part of the world, they are working in the morning. Yeah. So this is, this is the, the idea that this constant global collaboration, okay? What else, more ideas, more pros? Yes, cheaper formation, cheaper training is, is what he said, that you save money and time. Yeah, okay. And also in general, prestigious universities, okay? Or prestigious professionals in a field, okay? What about the cons? What about the cons? The disadvantages? Okay, no human contact. Okay, what else? Okay, less face-to-face -face interaction. Okay, the, the guidance, mm -hmm. the guidance or, or the tutors are not always there for you, for your personal doubts, but you depend a lot on other partners that may know your answer or not. In fact, 
It is quite common that in, in MOOCs, they choose like the top 10 questions because uh, students, okay, participants, have, uh, have a question, they make it in a forum, and then students vote the, the most recurrent questions, and the top 10 are answered by the teachers, but not the rest. So this is a disadvantage, okay? What else? Yes, a lack of self-organization, yes, may lead you to trouble. But it's true that if you're not interested, you can uh, avoid continuing the, the process. So, you know, this is... Okay, less uh, individualization. Okay, this idea of learner-centered approaches are not so easily covered in this, okay? Other ideas. The pros, cooperation, okay? between learners and teachers when possible. Okay, not always, but uh, among, among learners it's very, very common because you have to assess other people's uh, tasks. The active role of students, because you work with projects mainly, you have to work with tasks and you have to, to go with this. And usually, if you uh, want to join a MOOC, it's because you are interested about, you know, you want to do something about this. And of course you are, uh, motivated. The flexibility, the accessibility, the adaptability that we said earlier, international edu education, that you may know other processes, other approaches to a topic that you may know, and open access. These are some of the, you know, of other advantages that MOOC, uh, MOOCs have. In the cons, they tend to have lots of theoretical contents. They have lots of long PDFs, and especially very long videos. If you have a video that is longer than 10 minutes, you don't pay attention to that, okay? In some cases, it's not real education innovation. Why? Because in some cases, it's just the teacher saying something, okay? A standardization of knowledge, well, this is connected with globalization. The idea of the digital competence and autonomous learning as she said earlier, it's not always possible to continue this. If you are not very aware that you want to continue because we always have other things to do in general. And the high dropout figures. Why? Because as in general they are free, many, many, many people all over the world enter, see what it's about, and they don't continue. Uh, abandono. Las tasas de abandono son muy altas. Okay, but because of that, because when you have to pay for a product for something, if you have to pay uh, the amount, I don't mind. For something, you say, well, I have paid, so I need to finish it. But in this case, as you enter, in many cases, you haven't paid, so you don't feel like you have the obligation to finish it. So this is one of the uh, main criticism uh, against MOOCs, okay, the high dropout figures, okay? And now let's move to some resources for clean lessons. Uh, the idea was to use all these resources here, but considering our limitations, I had a plan B. And in this case, what I have is some videos to show you the functioning of these um, apps and software and so. But please keep them in mind because as you have to do a final task, maybe you can use any of these. You know, especially if you don't know it now, it's better because you will know something new, okay? And maybe you can implement it in your, in your, in your lessons, okay? Uh, in this case, um, in general, they are not um, only apps for education, but general apps that we can implement in our lessons, okay? So, first, gamification, learning by playing, okay? I have here some ideas about 
the role of games uh, at education that started in the in the 80s that you can read at home, but it's interesting because uh, it goes from the beginnings of Carmen San Diego to, to teach uh, social science, okay? Because if you remember the story, it was a woman who traveled all around the world. She was a kind of a spy, and this was the beginnings, or it is considered as one of the beginnings of gamification in, in, the, in the school. Okay, so you can, you can read it, and also, of course, civilization, that for history it was very good. But you can see this. Uh, I include it because I think that it's interesting if you have some time to read it, because you can see the evolution to our, for example, current Minecraft that children love, okay? I cannot understand Minecraft, <laughs> but it's true. Yes, it's a confession. I have tried, and even I have played, but I don't see the purpose of that. <laughs> but it's true, and many, many people use Minecraft for education purposes, okay? So here I have Class Dojo that somebody mentioned earlier at the back. Uh, Plickers and Plotagon, okay? Do you know all, all these? Well, Plickers, you mentioned that earlier. But the idea uh, of Dojo is a kind of competition among the students, okay? Then in Plickers, you only need your own device, but the students don't need any other device, okay? And in the case of Plotagon, I think it's one of my favorite because they have the possibility to create their characters and to create dialogues, and it's very good. So I will show you some examples of this. Okay? So, these are, these are uh, apps that you can use with a computer in Windows, in Mac, and with your mobile phones, okay? So let's see first Class Dojo. So as you can see, this is a system based on points, okay, kind of prizes for students. And they usually like it uh, a lot because as they, are, they have their own avatars that they can modify their monsters, they identify with them and then they try to get more points than the others. So it's a kind of competition, but it's not only focused or, I mean, if you want, you can do it, but it's not only necessarily focused on contents, but also on attitudes and competencies and skills. And in general, this system of uh, getting more points than the others usually help, uh, helps them to improve their behavior, their attitude in the context of a class, okay? And um, if I'm not wrong, also parents can see the, the scores and the results of the, of the students. So it's very good because families are also uh, conscious of the progress 
and the attitudes of the children uh, at, at, you know, in class, so it's very good. I, they usually like it a lot, okay? Now, in the case of uh, plickers, okay? In this case, as I told you, you only need your own device. In this case, it's not a description of the, of the app, but a real use in a classroom, okay? And you will see that the age of the students is primary education, okay? So as you can see, they have some cards with different okay, with different uh, positions, okay, and each position is associated to an answer. So they have time to, to for example, in this case, uh, to to do the problem. Yeah, and, and to get a solution. And then when they know their answers or they think they know the answer, they raise their hand with the card and with, with the smartphone, it's very easy to collect all the answers. And you can use the same uh, cardboards once and again and again because you only modify, it's like Kahoot that you associate colors. In this case, you associate positions of the square. It's quite easy, and the good thing is that you can uh, print the cardboards, and if you, for example, um, plastify them, you can use them with no problems, because you know that papers can, <laughs> can last for just some time, okay? So I think that this is another interesting tool. And uh, as I said, Plodagon is... Uh, a very interesting tool. Have you ever heard about that? Ploragon. No? Okay. Do you know the video game The Sims? Yes, The Sims? Okay. The Sims is a simulation of real life in which you create, you create your own character and you develop their lives. Okay? The, the interactions with other neighbors, with other people, even you get a job, okay, so you create, and you, de you design your, your own character that you can modify and personalize as you want. Plotagon has an appearance very similar to, to The Sims, okay? This is for free, and you can use it in your tablets or in your laptops. Uh, the only thing that you have to pay, but it's not really necessary, is if you, have, if you want additional features, additional uh, characters, or additional settings, but it's not really needed, because there are many that you can download for free. Okay, for example, uh, the settings at the school, in the cafeteria, uh, you know, at home in the different um, rooms of the house. So, you can download many, many possibilities and there's no problem. And the same with the characters. You can personalize them quite a lot with mm, no um, special difficulties, okay? Because the only thing is that you choose the face, the eyes, the eyebrows, the hair, and then the clothes, and, and they like it a lot. So in this case, it's mainly focused on, for example, creating dialogues. As you said that you uh, were creating videos or puppets in the previous activities, 
Uh, this can also be done with this. As I said, it's very easy to use. And, and then I have here, um, well, the presentation of the program, but also a um, short video that some of my students did. Uh, in this case, they were my students, but we have taken this into primary education. The problem is that the video is online and we cannot, <laughs> sorry, um, play that. But you will see, because you write the dialogues, if you write in Spanish, it's a disaster. But if you do it in English, they pronounce in English. So it's a text into voice software, but students can also record their own voices. Just clicking on that, okay? So I will show you the general presentation, and then I will show you an example of uh, a group of my students that uh, recorded, in, in this case, uh, the, the topic of their video was um, the assignment of destinations in the Erasmus program, okay? And they were very happy about that. Okay, so firstly, as I said, the presentation, I will make some comments about that, and then I'll show you the, the specific example, a real example.